Here in Williston, North Dakota, winter is starting to freeze out autumn, but records continue to be shattered. A labor force that's quadrupled the last five years. And here in the Bakken, a million barrels of oil a day coming out of the patch. But with that, darkness. Crime is up 120% here in Williston. And in the oil patch, a dirty little secret called sex trafficking. Tonight, the faces of the victims, the survivors, and what North Dakota is doing to save them. Coming up, trafficked. Isn't life a process? It is, oh, oh. On Fargo's downtown Broadway. She's going fast, she's going fast. The welcoming sound of yeah. one woman's past disappearing. Oh my God. 28 year old Danielle John is here at Vanished Inc. as a survivor. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> Not a victim. Now, is there any medication change? And nope. today, Renee Danielson helps Danielle begin the process of removing tattoos her sex trafficker made her wear. They were brands. They were a lot like, you know, you would brand a cow. You know that if he if this symbol was on us, we belonged to him. C O W. After the fourth treatment, a lot of this could be gone. That's right. She and other women under the control of one high profile sex trafficker were branded with his signature tattoo, a horseshoe and One, a nickname. Two, three. Either cowboy horseshoes, um, I had a very large tattoo on my back. Cowboy, the sex trafficker who controlled Danielle for so long, is Alex Campbell, known to his girls as Daddy. He even forced them to get full back tattoos with in more words than none, it is the rules, kind of, and the what he expected of us. It was like his scripture for his family, because in his mind, he was God, and so that's what this was. Campbell is now serving life in prison for sex trafficking and extortion. There was fear, I think, for the first few months after I got out of that life. Um, you know, fear, of course, of him coming back or finding me or someone else finding me. Um, and then it turned into guilt, shame um, of the things that I had done, what I had put my family through. This single parent of three grew up in Minnesota, struggled as a teen, and was trafficked at age 18. It was all about being controlled with no way out. That I really became under the mind control, the brainwashed, you know. I had truly believed everything that he was telling me was what I wanted, you know. And I did, in my mind, I did. It wasn't until after I found, you know, recovery that I found that no, that wasn't my mind working. I was just completely brainwashed. With Alex, all business, the sex business. It was, it was scary. Life was very busy. Um, there was little time to sleep, little time to eat, little time for fun things. It was always hustle, hustle, hustle. Um, it, you know, I started. I started in strip clubs, I went from strip clubs to escorting, I went from escorting to massage parlors, um, and that's basically where we kind of, the, the whole, my whole story stayed, was in the massage parlors and opening up different type of businesses like that. Um, and it was from basically sun up to sundown. You'd get there nine o'clock in the morning, you wouldn't get home till 10, you know, shower, sleep, maybe have something to eat, and you're back at it Monday through Sunday. And with Cowboy, Always the fear, always. I was very scared. You know, I w it was instilled upon me that if I left, I, I would be killed. I would be found, I would be killed. There was no leaving, I was in for life. No, I just wanna see how it's raising and okay. how it's doing. And so that is why a trip to the laser tattoo removal shop in Fargo is life changing. It's overwhelming, it's amazing. You know, um, that's one of the biggest burdens I have, is looking in the mirror and seeing these every day. You know, and, not, and it's not just once a day. You know, I see them multiple times a day. And to remember the pain that goes along with them. You know, I mean, I've done a, a lot of mental healing and soul healing, but physical healing, you know, this is just that next process. And I, you know, I'm willing to give it, you know, as long as it takes to have them gone and not have to 
look at them and remember that. And why the women at Vanished Inc., so moved by her story, offered to remove the tattoos free of charge. I think she is the bravest person I have met. Brave, brave, brave. And if I can, you know, you always think, what can I do in this world? How can I be a part of, of making this world better? And because I have this machine, I knew I could help her. I mean, her and her daughter have just been more than willing to help me in this next step in my journey. And it's been, I don't know, she's an amazing lady. And Danielle is realizing that it's all a process. Not only the months it will take to remove these tattoos, but recovering from the sex trafficker who controlled and held her down for so long. The inside scars will never heal. You know, and it's like those scars, my story will never change. It will always be my past. We can take these off, yeah, and get you comfortable. Before this, she covered up some of the brands with flowers. It sent a powerful message. And there's the lotus flower on my back because they're beautiful things. You know, I can make beauty out of such a horrid past, you know, and a life that I lived. And with that, then hopefully I can help someone else or show them that you don't have to live like that. You don't have to be ashamed or scared. The three children she raises are always on her mind as she returns for these laser visits. It's a big thing, you know, that my kids see him and they ask, you know, who, they wonder why my oldest son, he's reading now, you know? And so I do try to keep a lot of them, like especially the scroll covered when I'm around them, but they wonder, you know, so if these tattoos are gone, you know, then they don't have to wonder about that cowboy. That cowboy is not something that, I don't know, holds mom back, because they've seen me cry over him too. For Danielle, the shame and guilt she lived with as a sex trafficking victim is now fading, like her brand. I heal every day. You know, um, for the first few years, I replaced my feelings and my guilt and my shame and everything inside with, you know, drugs and alcohol. Now I've, able, I've been able to kind of live life beyond that. Now raising your children, going to college to be a social worker, Danielle is not only healing, she's discovered a purpose. Now I've, able, I've been able to kind of live life beyond that, deal with my emotions, deal with the psychological effects that it's had on me, and you know now live life and not just exist, and not have my past define my future. When we come back here in the Bakken, victims of sex traffickers want out, but who is here to help them? Where can they go? Find out when we return. And so it is a balancing act, the Bakken with an exploding population, the state of North Dakota with a bulging treasury, and now federal, state, and local authorities vowing to declare war on sex trafficking. No wonder Teddy Roosevelt called Western North Dakota perfect freedom. In these badlands, Roosevelt wrote, the romance of my life began. Today in Western North Dakota, a changing landscape. Oil rigs echoing their sometimes lonely, strained tune now dot the Dakotas, this once sacred space of the West. And where the prairies meet the hills, there are reminders times have changed. And when days turn into nights at sunset, Roosevelt's quiet, quaint west has turned wild. With the influx of workers, thousands of them from around the world, the Bakken oil patches witnessed a population and black gold boom. A housing shortage, a traffic nightmare, and piles of money waiting to be spent. From downtown Williston's main street bars to its alleys, strip clubs, motels, where traffickers were told buy up an entire floor for the night. Some call it a human trafficking epidemic. They've been controlled and manipulated and coerced and 
lied to and fully bought in to the the false reality of their situation, oftentimes they don't even realize that they're a victim of anything. Wendy Lazenko is the face behind For Her North Dakota, a nonprofit group that is empowering women who find themselves trapped in the vicious cycle of sex trafficking. They, they've been made to believe it's their choice that they're involved in um, prostitution. She'll sometimes meet girls at all hours of the night to help them escape the trade. One recent story of a survivor here makes this worth it for Lazenko. You know, I, I had one girl here who I asked her, what do you really want to do? She said, I want to go back to high school. She, she was like one credit short and left six months early. And I said, what if I can get you back in high school and you can get your diploma? She was absolutely floored that that would still be possible for her. She's wow. back in high school getting her diploma and now looking at college. What's that make you feel? That's gotta make you feel like a mom. A, like a mom, like a, a victor, like, you know, like there, there's victory. Lazenko in just one year has arrived in North Dakota, formed a nonprofit, worked with federal agents, and has traveled the upper Midwest to share her story and about her efforts to empower women. Women being trafficked here in the Bakken, day and night. And so it's operating the same as it would in a big city um, through Backpage.com, a lot of internet activity. Uh, but there are hotels that are operating as brothels. The strip clubs there are, are definitely contributing um, to the trafficking. Lazenko knows she's a survivor. And so I experienced my first incident of being trafficked at 13 years old. Pimped out as a teenager, trapped in the world of trafficking, she now runs for her, and it is a risk. Yeah, I, and I've, I've actually not been warned, but people who know, like law enforcement, say you're aware that these people are present here, aren't you, and involved in trafficking, and be careful. When we come back to the oil patch here in Williston, battling sex trafficking, who and how are they trying to stop it? When we return. Like buffalo stampeding across the old Dakota prairie, law enforcement in this part of the state was initially knocked off its feet when organized crime and sex traffickers first moved in. Now it appears battle lines are drawn. 4784, dispatch. 10, 10 Law enforcement here in the oil patch has watched quiet small towns in the Badlands grow into mini metros, growing pains. It's getting better, but with a lot of guys making a lot of money, it's, it's unfortunately a side effect that's going to happen. We rode along with Williams County Deputy Jake Manuel. It's not a small town anymore. It's a pretty big city. Um, the building's catching up with the actual population, and, you know, it's, it's big city problems now. And a lot of people forget, you know, just because it was such a quiet little town, you know, five, six, seven years ago, and now it's, it's not. <laughs> it completely changed and law enforcement across the board. Dispatch 4956. From the FBI, North Dakota BCI, and county and local authorities have teamed up through multiple training sessions across the Dakotas. Undercover operations. From Bismarck to Fargo to Sioux Falls, all to develop a multi-pronged approach to combat trafficking. The prevention, the prosecution, the aftercare for victims. I say prosecution, prosecution, prosecution. And victims advocates are learning that as they go, shelters for domestic abuse survivors may not be a fit for sex trafficking victims. If a woman's being trafficked or prostituted, uh, the offender, if, if he feels like he's lost control of that, like he's lost someone that has been providing a really high level of service and, and, and giving him a lot of income, he may pose a higher level threat to our crisis centers, our shelters. So we've had to really work with law enforcement uh, more consistently to say, you know, their, their situations. But it's been a challenge for us because most often we, uh, if victims want to get up and leave, our, our shelter will allow them to do that. But right. when you've got a federal or a state prosecution going on, you know, we are, are kind of stuck in the middle with uh, providing services for someone, but also they may be a witness in any right. case. The result is this. More than a dozen men from the oil patch charged with trafficking women for sex recently 
Investigators combing through websites, setting up detailed stings in motels to catch the men behind the supply used to meet the demand. In 48 hours in Dickinson, North Dakota, there were 11 dudes who thought the best way to spend the weekend was to go online and try and arrange commercial sex with a 14-year-old girl. I have been used to training now four and a half years. That was one of the most shocking, sort of sobering moments for me to have identified that level of demand for commercial human trafficking of minor victims in Dickinson, North Dakota. Now we're seeing a systematic um, trafficking not just you know pimping out the the runaway but a systematic connected with what we believe is organized crime u.s senator heidi heitkamp of north dakota has been at the forefront of the battle now waged focusing on more than the crackdown pushing for the aftercare it takes a unique strategy in aftercare for our standpoint from prosecution standpoint it's critically important that we deal appropriately with the victim because the only way you're going to get a prosecution is if the victim is forthcoming and and willing to provide and submit that testimony and soon the oil patch may see even more undercover federal and state agents and tougher state laws that will make it easier to prosecute the bad guys with huge amounts of cash and always heavily armed instead of those women caught in the web. Legislation that will change our statute, that will say that if you are a victim of human trafficking and you are being coerced or forced or threatened into participating in the trade, you're not a criminal, you're a victim. And some of that protection will come for the young Native American women on North Dakota's reservation. With a chunk of the Bakken oil rigs on reservation land, the men, the money, have come to the once sleepy, sacred land. Safe houses and shelters are going up, along with the oil pumps. We're all learning about human trafficking now and how to deal um, with the new epidemic that we've had. We were never used to that. We didn't even really know what it was until it hit us in the face one day. And then we've had to be in crisis mode to learn how to serve our victims as well. Lazenko's For Her and Fargo based groups like One Force United and Voice for the Captives are all about compassion, not persecution. I was just trying to find a purpose in my life and never in a million years did I think I would be doing fighting sex trafficking. Um, I wasn't a victim of this. I, to me, this is the most evil, most the darkest um, evil that's around right now, and um, it broke my heart into a billion pieces, and with, I can't not do anything anymore. That's not an option for me. For the last year, a team of journalists from Forum Communications has spread out across the tri-state area and beyond, documenting the obvious online supply of sex that sells. What are you seeing even in the morning? Um, we already have 21 ads for Williston just posted this morning for commercial sex in Williston. Interviewing those who are living the life, combating the problem, and healing those hurting. So we feel it's important for our readers to, you know, really understand that this is happening because the police can't be everywhere, the prosecutors can't be everywhere. It's really the hotel workers, the public that can, you know, bring up um, tips and, and really be a key part of, of solving this. Forum Communications reporters Amy Dalrymple and Catherine Lim have joined a team of forum photographers going to summits and meetings with players involved with the sex trafficking world in the bucket. And I think it's important to cover it because a lot of people, especially in North Dakota, look at this as willing prostitution. They say the women are just here to make a quick buck and they're all happy to do it. Um, that's the biggest obstacle we're going to have writing the stories is conveying kind of the anger and the sadness that we've felt in some of these interviews. And it's not just the Dakotas. The team even documented this rally in the Twin Cities, a march to call attention to sex trafficking, including women who are now survivors. So he took me to these bars and uh, made me feel really grown up and uh, giving me lots of compliments. And, and then, yeah. <laughs> a few hours east of the oil patch, Fargo Moorhead is now starting to see a disturbing trend. There's a lot of recruiting, I think, that occurs in this area. More than we think. More than we think. Recruited by traffickers from the outside who hope to make it big out west. It's a direct line from Minneapolis, and they get here, and then they can be centrally located in Fargo, and then offshoot out west in North Dakota, and go work for a week or whatever, and then come back here. But there's a lot of business 
in the Fargo area right now. Even people know I can go to. And we saw it firsthand. 21-year-old Jane, a single mother of one from Fargo, is currently being trafficked in the oil patch. She had just returned from a weekend there when we spoke. I've made $500 for half an hour and got a hotel room and everything, so. And another friend of yours? I made 2000 that night. It's easy, you can just walk into like a bar, Walmart. They're waiting everywhere. They're just waiting because it's easy money. And when you're you, your mind's youth too, um, your mind changes and it, you start thinking it's okay, you know, because of the money. And you, you, you can legitimize it. You, you, yeah, your mind can rationalize why it's okay. And the risks for Jane and others being trafficked? I was thinking if something went wrong, you know, how am I going to get out of it? Because um, we hear there's only like five cops in the whole town. Yeah. So there's a high crime rate out there. So I was thinking about if something went the wrong way, how am I going to get myself out of here? Her trafficker, Willie Navy of Minneapolis, now in jail on trafficking charges in Clay County. The threats against Jane, real. I ran into one right this weekend and on Sunday he was gonna beat me up over $80. I'm like, really over, and in this money, you see so much money. When you think 80 or $100, it's like, that's that's nothing. That's like, $100 is nothing. So you, I'm looking at the dude over $80 and he was gonna beat my ass over $80. And he's already beaten other girls' ass. And he's okay. Mm -hmm. And he told me if I called the cops, he was gonna kill me. And the dude had a gun. You know, he they're loaded guns too. When we come back, now what? North Dakota trying to find that balance, celebrating success here in the Bakken, while not forgetting those victims left behind, victims of sex trafficking. Sex traffickers can forcibly hang on to their victims for years, a powerful grip, leaving behind physical and mental scars. A trafficker first recruited 45-year-old Jennifer Gaines of Minnesota when she was just 14. So this whole recruiting process, that's the process where they're introducing you to prostitution. Mm -hmm. So when I say within 48 hours I was recruited, that means I met him and that process started. Mm -hmm. Do you get that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that process might have been five months, but it was a process where he started all that brainwashing, all that, you know, um, just planting a lot of seeds. She can tell you stories of North Dakota's Bakken during the first boom years ago. Then now. I had a few sugar daddies that I could call, you know, in North Dakota. Oh, it's just sugar daddy city. <laughs> Lots of lonely farmers with all this money. She's worked the oil pan. This prostitution makes you crazy. Watched as small, cozy, quiet towns exploded before her eyes. Since that oil boom happened, like it used to be really nice farmers and stuff, you know, maybe a couple weirdos, you know, or goofies, but they were nice. Um, these oil people are idiots and obnoxious. And as a victim of sex trafficking and now a survivor, she watched as organized crime moved in and changed the face of Western North Dakota. I had finally got to a place where I was just really empty and broken and, and um, I felt all used up, you know. Okay, now we're almost done with the cowboys. But for the survivors, it's all about the healing. Oh, you met Danielle earlier in our documentary. She continues to make strides. It's amazing. It's beyond what I could ever picture my life being. Um, I was so broken for so long and so scared and alone. I felt alone. Now it's about her family. Her three kids are safe, secure. She calls it amazing. 
it shows that there is hope beyond this too. You know, you don't have to live in your past. You know, the big thing that I've had to tell myself is my past can't dictate my future. You know, it is my past. It's made me the person I am today. And I can move on and try to grow from that and do bigger and better things. Can we do it in like four sections? The guilt, the shame, it's like her tattoos. They're disappearing. I'm enjoying life. I think I'm living life for once. You know, whereas before I was just existing. And her trafficker, Alex Campbell, now in federal prison for life. I pray that he can find some sort of peace in the horrible things that he's done. You know, I pray that on his judgment day, you know, that God can forgive him if he's truly sorry for the sins that he's done. There's one hope. But I am so glad and so thankful and so blessed and everything else that he cannot hurt another human being. You know, whether it's male, female, animal, it doesn't matter. He can never hurt another person again. It is evening in the oil patch. Roosevelt's Badlands, a place he called fantastic and grimly picturesque. Will not sleep tonight. The oil patch hardly rests. As the flares light up the night sky, the oil rigs and pumps work overtime. And the Bakken's secrets are lost out here in the Wild West.